Everybody, welcome to the Walking Purpose Podcast, y'all. This is season three. Season three. Again, like I always say, thank you for uh, old listeners from season one and two. Now, if you're a new listener, Walking Purpose Podcast is up every Sunday, every Sunday at 12 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm excited about this guest today. You may connect in for a few months, just like my brother. So very exciting, Brody Knox. Feel free to induce yourself, sir. Thank you, brother. Um, my name is Brody. I'm 27 years young. I live on the Gold Coast in Australia. And um, yeah, so, so grateful I've had a chance to um, interview Craig on my platform and just finally um, doing time zones. We were ch chuckling before we jumped on recording. It's just so nice to um, support each other in our own mission because I really look up to Craig. So yeah, super honored to, to hold this space with you. Appreciate that. Appreciate that, brother. But hopefully we get started. How are you feeling right now? What's your current mind state? How are you doing? Yeah, feeling um, a lot of emotions right now um, in this space of stepping into some big decisions in my coaching. So to get trained in NLP, um, that's in relation to neuralistic in programming um, and specializing in hypnosis and emotion change techniques. So my healing journey has been hypnosis and ect mm -hmm. um and i've this trainer um a lot of people say oh what's nlp or this is there's so many doing different courses right so for right. me i was very uh had to make sure this trainer was aligned to me but also um she's worked alongside um tony robbins Kerwin ray um grant cardone's wife um richard branson robert kiwazashi like incredible people I look up to so it's not like someone trying to make a buck over me so I've, yeah. I've had a lot of mentors has trained with her and I'm just excited to break down limiting beliefs and so I can step into more of who Brody is and just unpeeling the layers as you've seen on my Instagram as I've changed quite a bit since um we've connected yeah yeah you know speaking of Instagram uh one thing you posted something about uh, creating a morning routine Care to share the audience what's the importance of creating morning routine for yourself and others? Yeah, fantastic. And hand on heart, brother, like I sometimes don't do it and my body really knows when I haven't done my morning routine. So yeah. for what I've posted, what I've shared, mine is, so I wake up, try to be at 5 a.m., um, but it fluctuates between 5 and 6. It really depends on my work, work schedule. So as long as I breathe, so my breath work, guided meditation, so when I first wake up, uh, cold shower, really wake up the body, glass of water with lemon to, to feel like the benefits of that. And then I sit with myself outside. Um, I'm so lucky where I live. I've got lots of rainforest, lots of trees, lots of nature. So I don't need YouTube uh, calming music. I've got it all around me. So gratitude book. Um, I do three little sentences. So things I'll let go of things I'm grateful for and things I'll focus on. So that really gets in the mindset of like out of my head and into my heart and gratitude book journaling and affirmations. If I feel the need for it, if I feel just a little bit of a pet talk, sometimes I do that, but it really fluctuates. I'm very um, still try to find my groove, but morning routine has saved my life in the space of reducing and eliminating my panic attacks and, uh, when I get so worked up in my head, because I still work currently in the mental health and disability sector. So if I miss uh, stretching or going to the gym or writing down my thoughts, that's when I get so in my head throughout the day and I question what's going on. So that's when I feel that's when I've missed it. So morning routine, set yourself up just like yourself with the gym and set an intention. Um, it's just consistency and yeah. making sure that you're doing something that you actually enjoy instead of copying someone else. Yeah, that, that's a good point because um, that's something I've been doing lately. Like lately, uh, what I've been doing in the morning is 
other than going to the gym, working out, I know I like to build my mind up. It's, I think it's very important. I literally learn to like manifest my day to like the smallest detail, like how my day is going to go, like is things going to go good, like you know, when I was working in the school system, how many is going to go, like how the kids going to be, how I'm going to react, how's my drive to work for, like to to like the the very smallest detail. Now, like what you're doing, like you're creating your day before it starts, building your heart up. That's very important. I salute you on that. You know. Thank you so much, and I I find that because I've looked up to and I've got a social media presence just like yourself, they've seen me in the darkest moments, in the hospital, on medication, panic attacks, um, even suicidal. And I've got to the point where does Brody heal? And like with the Instagram name, like Brody.wellnessguy, it's people like, what's he do? What's, what's he doing? What's he doing? So for me, I try to be an integral with what I post and what I share. So when I share something, I've actually experienced it. And it actually does the benefit. So I'm not just quoting something off Google and say, just do it. Um, I really focus on, I've done it. It served me. I think it can serve someone with my personality type, et cetera. Yeah, that's a good point. I, I really believe like life experiences are, are the best teachers. You know, I think a lot of times people overlook themselves. Like, I, um, I'm not good enough at speaking or what can I use? Like, it's not your experience through life. You know, that I, I definitely agree with you on that. Like, me experiencing depression, experiencing, you know, suicide ideations, experiencing moments of darkness. So you kind of can go from your own experience what it felt like, you know, um, like one example, I always say, like, remember how it feels when you're in that process, like write it down how you feel. So when you get to those moments of victory, you get to those moments of years from now, months from now, you know what it feels like, so you can help someone else out. Very Absolutely. And no, no journey is the same. And I think it's really important that yeah. especially what you're up to and, and so many other beautiful people that we've connected and vice versa in different podcasts and collaborations that men are doing the work now. Men yeah. are, are going diving deep. So there's no such thing now when people go, oh, you know, just really stop talking about that. Or it's for me now I'm seeing men do the inner work, really show up, coach people, talk about shadow work and inner, inner work. So um, it's beautiful because then people can say, oh, Craig's done a podcast. Craig's done a book. Maybe I can chat about whatever that's something to me. So when you see someone doing it and in the trenches, it's really inspiring to see. So, um, And that's why I connected with you as well, like seeing all those. It feels like I've known you for such a long time, even over a yeah, year it plus. Like but it's, just, it's, it's beautiful. It's, it's, it's just supporting each other because a story, as you know, can, uh, can really inspire people to create a better life for them and their family around them. Yeah, I definitely agree. It's it's a good thing to see like a lot of men around the world just like telling their story, telling their truth. You know, years ago it wasn't wasn't like this. It wasn't a lot of men speaking up on their feelings. It wasn't a lot of men being encouraged to like encourage each other. So this is very important. So that goes to my next question. What advice do you give to any listener right now on this podcast or on YouTube or anything that's having a hard we both know that's like having a hard time, like finding your purpose, having a hard time, just seeing who you are as an individual. What advice would you give to that person? Mm, that's a beautiful question. I find the biggest lesson that I've learned being in the, you know, the darkness and I felt like I was the only one and I surrounded myself with people that were in the trenches, but also they were guiding people with the light saying, Hey, I'm here for you. Or Hey, like just for an example, I remember you sending me this video and I was at work and I was having a really tough day. I'm not sure if I told you the story. I know that you sent a video on, on this uh, reel. It was a TikTok. I was like, you're amazing. You're a legend. You're enough. And I was actually having a really tough day at work. And just opening that. And so it took you probably 10, 20 seconds to forward that to me. But it actually stuck to me to this day. And what I find is heal people, heal people. So the people that are going through really tough moments, if you get out of your head, I know it's hard because everyone just wants to be validated which is yeah. natural, right? Mm -hmm. But my, oh, sorry, go on. No, go ahead, brother. You good, you good, you good. Keep going. Oh, yeah. Um, and in relation to like, when I say heal people, heal people, it's like, if you can get out of your head and see who else you can help, still in that mindset of like, I hate myself, I don't like my life, you'll notice a huge difference because if you're going to sit in that and you can sit in that, so little tips, I'll try to do like little micro little tips. Um, because it can be quite overwhelming listening to things when you're going through. So like 
five minutes, do a timer, just release, like throw pillows, yell in the pillow, shake your body out, mm. um, just vent, scream, whatever you need. And then after that, going, cool, that's done now. Let's move forward. So it could be um, having like for, for what I use, I use a lot of essential oils. I use a lot of different herbal teas. I listen to guided meditations, different podcasts that uh, support me through my mind. And I think the biggest thing when you're going through the trenches, I'll get back to, I'll, pe- I'll peel the layer back, is reaching out. The biggest step for me is admitting that I had a problem that I was struggling. So for me, I was having panic attacks. I knew it wasn't normal to have that every day because I never experienced that when I was younger. So when I got into the space of panic attacks, wasn't really looking after my body by the choices that I eat, the gym that I go to, the people that I hang around with. And for me, I knew that I had to get help. So I am a very uh, extroverted person. I called my doctor and I said, I want to face-to-face counseling. If you struggle with anxiety or social anxiety, there is tech services here in Australia that I know of. And I know Craig's got amazing resources in the US, but I think it's just knowing that, hey, I'm going through this. Don't listen to John and Bill down the road saying, you'll be fine, get over it. Because it's just all that education awareness. So back in my parents' days, my grandparents' days, it's always like, I've been to war, harden the fuck up. Like it's, you hear that. But when you're going through that, you just go, oh shit, there's someone in Africa starving. There's poverty, there's homelessness. But that's all good and all. And you can address that later on, but you're not really focusing on yourself because if I'm going through depression and I'm feeling anxious, I'm like, you need to feel that because if you don't, you're actually not listening to your mind and body and soul. So Craig, he's beaten depression, suicide is an incredible story. But if I just said, oh, that's all right. Like I've got that. There's someone else better than me or worse than me. You're just not validating your emotions. So that's changed my life. And I hope it serves you and the community of the listeners because if you're not addressing how you're feeling, then it's going to keep coming back and back and it's going to get stronger and stronger until you go, Hey, I need some help. Yeah. Um, man, you, you killed that, the whole question. And let me just add to that. Um, like a lot of things, what I learned to do is also lately, I learned to write some, like, let's say you had a long day, right? And let's say one thing good happened in a day. So I learned to write that thing down. Right. So what you're doing is you're building that mode of uh, trusting yourself and have those good thoughts. At the same time, I do agree, like having those brothers and sisters or whoever you reach out to, that important that you can vent to. You can't tell everybody what you're going through. You know, so it's one of those things where people are like, I'm going through depression. Like, yeah, like you said earlier, people are like, yeah, but this person is going through that. Right now, I'm talking about me. Mm-hmm. And in your self journey, your self love journey, and all that, it's okay to focus on you. 100%. It's okay to focus on you. It's okay to, you know what? I need to work on me. And the thing is, saying, listener, you never stop working on you. That never stops. Even when you beat depression and you beat anything like that, like continue to build yourself up. Don't wait till you're in a dark place to keep building yourself up. No, keep doing that regardless. Definitely. I feel that so many people are in the same space. Sorry, I'll get back to, I'm really yeah. learning I statements. Like for example, when I go so many people, I'm actually like comparing to everybody. So for me, I'll go back yeah. to I statements, what I'm learning in the men's circle. So I feel that I am off medication. I'm out of hospital. I'm feeling great, but people see on stories what they want to see. So I post when I'm happy, when I'm down, when everything's good, because so many people just like yourself, you look at their content and it's like, oh, I needed to see that today because everyone it wants to win. Everyone yeah. wants to be at the top. Yeah. But in, in all honesty, and I this might trigger some people, and it's good. I like getting triggered in different uh, ways. Mm-hmm. But not everyone can be at the top. Not everyone can be the CEO. So you've got to figure out when it comes back to your why and it comes back to why you do. So for an example, I have I always say this story because it hits me. It's not my story, but it's um, Gary, Gary V, uh, the entrepreneur. Um, he always says, I'd rather earn 50000 a year working a job I love instead of earning $200,000 and stressed out my mind. Mm-hmm. And that hit me because I've been in this journey, Craig, that I'm like, I need to be 
this person I need to have this following I need to have this workshop to be this perfect and that and this and it's this few years I've got to be really really tough yeah can be uh, long nights and she respected that but not everyone's on that journey so for me I'm going to give it a go and if it doesn't end up where it needs to I'll really just report to know do the work first and don't give up for the paycheck and the get hard. Is that when the growth? Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. Like, I think a lot of times when uh, us as people, we focus on, like, trying to be perfect. Mm. We, we focus on, like, oh, I, I got to I gotta look like this. I got, like, sometimes you got to focus on where you're at right now. You know, and that's one thing I had to get out of my head. Like, you don't have to be perfect to find your purpose. Like, that... Mm. Fake mentality, it, it don't exist. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, I'm, I'm going to wait till I get rich to enjoy the process. No, enjoy it now. Why are you in the process? Enjoy it. Enjoy the climb up to your journey, whatever it is. That's a good point. I want to read this quote if I, I can. It's from Brene okay. Brown. She's mm-hmm. an author. Um, when, perfection, when perfectionism is driving you, shame is riding shotgun. Say that again. Um, <laughs> so when perfection when perfectionism is driving you, shame is riding shotgun. So in relation to, for me, and when I heard this, um, Brene Brown's incredible, The Power of Vulnerability. She's done a few books, an incredible lady. And what I've noticed, perfectionism is like, so many people is like shame. It's like shame of not posting this or shame of doing this. So I don't think, in relation to perfectionism, everyone calls themselves, but I think they're just really, um, they're just not aligned to what they're doing. And there was a really an- another one that just blew my mind. I want to share it with the viewers. It's like, and it just, I'll, I'll share it to you in the story so then you can post it in your story so people can know. But um, Elizabeth Walker, the NLP trainer that I'm training with, she's like, there's no such thing as an empath. So stop calling yourself an empath because you type in M, um, it's like them and then path path is pathetic. So you're actually like giving them like patheticness. But if you're compassionate, co is community and passion uh, and path is following their path. So for example, so many people are calling themselves uh, empathetic, but they're actually like taking on people's problems. And like, for example, say you're going through suicidal ideation. I go, oh yeah, bro, i I, I've resonated and I've done that. It's like, I'm actually not listening to your pain. So it can trigger some people. And I'll share that story because I didn't explain it as best as I could. But um, yeah, it's just the way we speak to ourselves is just so vital um, because how we interpret things, like our mind can only take on so much information and Instagram and stories, and this and everything's like that. And if you take on everything, make it your values um it, you just got to make sure that they're your values so i've been going through the reason why i say this i've been going through a lot of different uh values and i've been actually living and i did a lot of trauma release um through the men's work i'm doing mm-hmm. of having my mom and my dad past partners past people that i've worked with have actually had their values of money and how to do life so it's when you go into the inner work you can find out who you really are I love that. I love that. I love that. Um, speaking of the journey, care to the audience, like your journey, like any setbacks you face in your life, like depression or anything like that? Yeah, so my life has been an incredible roller coaster. I call it a roller coaster because I love roller coasters and roller coasters is all the way up and you enjoy the ups. You've got to make sure you go to the down as well. So you enjoy it. There's always it's going to be down. So for me, um, I've been through um, child when I was about, I wouldn't say child, but I was about teenage. And my parents divorced, and that was a big identity shift for me. Um, I changed school quite the last year of year 12. So I went to a whole new town, left all my friends for 13 years, job, girlfriend at the time, 
um, that made me who I am today. So I know more people can look at my story um, on Instagram and tags, but basically I've healed from panic dis- disorder, um, PTSD, uh, generalized anxiety disorder, depression. Um, I survived a suicide attempt in 2020 when I admitted myself to the mental health unit. And I was being diagnosed all these labels that, you know, ADHD, qu- quite young. Um, last two years ago, they diagnosed me with borderline personality disorder where I can have high and lows. Um, and honestly, none of them actually resonate with me anymore. Mm. And people go, oh, you can't outgrow a mental illness. And I'm like, try me. Um, because we all have symptoms. We all have everything that can make your life hard. But I chose to not be that label. So for me, yes, I have high energy. Yes, I can get distracted and I do struggle with learning. It takes me a while to get it, but that just makes me hungry, right, to understand a little bit more. Yeah. Um, but every part of my life, mate, I've, I've, I've enjoyed it. Like to where I am today, to where I was as like a little kid, um, I'm just so proud of the younger Brody. I really am. I can say that with a smile on my face and like, not feel cheesy about it you know when people go i'm proud of you and you just go oh i'm proud of you too they don't actually take the compliment for me um there's so many people looking up to me and i know that because i speak to them daily and they're just like bro it, the way you speak about mental health and your journey like it makes me want to open up more so i'm yeah. just going to keep doing what i'm doing and yes it's i'm just like yourself we're just incredible uh entrepreneurs in that space of just wanting to give the love back. So if we've been through darkness, as we both do, we hold the torch for people and go, Hey, if you want to come, come with us. If not, we're always still going to be here. Yeah. Um, let me just say this to you. You have a way of being very transparent in your delivery, whether it's through a video or it's through a post or anything like that. Like, I love how you're being vulnerable and saying like, Hey, I'm going through this right now. or This is what it is. And like a lot of times us as creators and us as like podcasts also, whatever the case may be, sometimes we post it after we go through it. Right. Mm. And like, I like how the fact you're saying like, Hey, I'm going through this right now, but I'm going to get through it. People can relate to that. You know, people can relate to that. Listen to that driving to work or going home. Like, you know what? That was very encouraging. So I'm just telling you, like, keep doing what you're doing. Like you're literally leading the pack. I appreciate you, bro. Thank you so much, brother. It's um, it's, it's something I really take um, like hand on heart because when I was a little kid going to counsellors, doctors, psychologists, being called dumb, not good enough, not going to be amount to nothing. It, it's called motivational porn. So Stella Young, she passed away. Um, she called motivational porn. So for an example, it's like you've got to be this person. You're motivated. Then like everyone loses motivation. There's no such thing as you want to wake up and do this. Like not everyone wants to wake up at 5 a.m. and work out. You just do it because you make it feel better. So consistency yeah. and integrity for me is just showing up and being the best person. I know there's so many other people out there doing incredible things. And I just go, there's so much people that need support. I'm not selfish when I say like, for an example, if there's clients that come to me and I can't help them, I'm like, cool. I've got Craig in the US. I got um, Owen in the UK. I've got all these other people that I can connect with. So it's like, it goes full circle and people go, oh, you're just doing that. I'm like, no, like generally I actually want people to feel supported and love. And I've actually just made it my life mission, just like um, Tony Robbins, just like uh, Dean Graziosi, like all those stories, they just, if we, if you actually listen to what they've been through and to where they are now, they just want to help people. Um, and yeah, I, this is my life's purpose. I'm literally walking my life's purpose right now, talking to you today um it's 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 been a journey i literally didn't like who i was a lot of body image issues a lot of self-worth issues and i was actually scared of men for quite a while because the experience of trauma that i went through so i only saw men um to the point of like bad toxic masculinity so now that i'm stepping into men's group and facilitating and holding i go hey they can hug me. They can love me. They can hold me. Like they're not hurting me right now. So um, I just want to share that with you guys. Cause I just love seeing people see the real me um, yeah. because Instagram, unfortunately with the algorithms and all the different parts, I don't want anyone to jump on my stories and go, Oh fuck, 
you know, I want them to go, oh, yes, like, this is amazing. Like, I don't want people to feel, I don't want, basically, I don't want to be on a pedestal. I want yeah. you to cut me in half. Cut me in half, please. I'm on your same playing field. I'll walk next to you. I'll never walk in front of you or behind you. I'll walk next to you. I'm so pumped up right now. I'm like, I was feeling a bit uneasy this morning just with emotion. And I'm like, oh, like talking to you, talking to you, like, I can change the world. Like, let's let's run a retreat right now. Like, let's yeah. inspire people, you know? So it's, it's right. this is what I want people to know. Like, when you're with the right people and you get a voice to be heard, just like Craig, just like myself, we've done it together. It's like you just want people to come along with you. And it, it might be confronting seeing people um, doing things you want to do, but um, I find it's just really important just to take that one step and then honour you. Just as Craig said perfectly um, 10, 15 minutes ago in relation to like enjoy the process. Don't worry. Don't wait till you buy the house, get married, have kids. Enjoy that process of being single or being in a relationship because I guarantee I'm 27 now. I've been married for two years, been the same woman for seven years. I sometimes forget when I was single. I sometimes forget I live with my parents. Like now I've got a house, a mortgage, running this business. It's like, how did I actually get here? Mm -hmm. So it's so easy to hustle, hustle, hustle. But if you don't actually enjoy the process, your life will just like be that. And kind of back, let's just keep it back real simple because I like to keep it simple, stupid, my favourite analogy, yeah, um, is gratitude. To help you stay present is gratitude every day. It could be it, you might not have food in the fridge. You might not have any water in the fridge right now, but you might have a bed, and just write that down. You've got a pillow, a blanket. You've got doors that lock so people don't come in. Those things that can put you in a better state. Yes, I love it. I love it. Um... That's why I, I really believe in, I, I'm not, scratch that. I don't believe in the whole thing of team no sleep. You know, mm. see a lot of entrepreneurs like, oh, no sleep, no sleep. Oh, I got to grind. I got to do this. I got to hustle. No, you're wearing yourself out. I really believe you should enjoy the process. Like um, every Friday, my fiance and I, we like to go out. We like to hang out. We like to sometimes take a drink because enjoy the process of your hard work. We both are hard workers. We both are entrepreneurs. We both got like podcasts and books and all that type of stuff. But outside of that, we still have life. So the thing is, like, like this, you're listening right now. Outside of your nine to five, outside of anything you're doing, you still have life. Find a way to enjoy your process. Go out, do whatever. Even if you can't go out, find something that you like that you enjoy. Never forget to enjoy your life because you only get one go around. That's it. One. Goosebumps, literally. I feel that right now. Like I feel that in my whole body. Um, geez, man, I love it. I love how you just bring the realness as always because I've seen working in suicide prevention crisis lines, working with the homelessness, people that are experiencing homelessness, um, seeing my dad try to take his life. He's still alive right now. He's very ill though. Seeing my whole family like split apart at 13 years old, it made me realise like, I see people have lunch to this day and dinner and go, God, I, I miss that. And whenever you say, I fucking hate my brother or I hate my mom, I hate my dad. Yeah, you might hate what they're doing, but you don't hate them as a person. Hate's a very strong word. So um, just be really mindful of like, just because you're not enjoying what you have right now. Um, I'll do this perfect analogy. I try to do this in every podcast. But for an example, there's a guy in a wheelchair. He's on a hotel. He's looking down at someone and he's, someone's walking. And the guy's like in the wheelchair said, God, I wish I could walk. The guy walking said, God, I wish I had a car. Yeah. And then for an example, the car, someone had a helicopter. He's like, God, I wish I had Everyone is one in your life. That's Everyone true. is one in your life. And you have no idea who's watching and who's inspired by you. Like people, you might hate how your life is at the moment, but someone is seeing your life as their vision board. So yeah. It comes to the point where um, I'm guilty of it and I know everyone is guilty of it, but it comes down to intention going, cool. Yeah. I need to block out Friday. No one's booking with me. I'm spending time with my wife. Mm -hmm. And for example, I do the same. I do monthly date night. Try to do it fortnightly because monthly is quite a long time and we both work stressful jobs. Uh, one in the disability healthcare entrepreneur coaching and the other side 
working in admin and constantly on the call, helping people with oxygen and people like dying. So you can imagine the stress of that. Um, and it doesn't have to be money. So like I've actually learned relearning that. So for an example, if you struggle with money right now, get a blanket, sit somewhere on a park, get your favorite games, Uno card games, and just sit and actually turn your phone off. You're not, <laughs> there's no emergency with social media. Yeah. Um, and take a photo if you want, post in your stories and turn it off and just sit with your wife yeah. or partner, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, just for an hour. I promise you, you'll actually just find out what they need because when you do that, sitting in stillness with your wife and also another thing as well, I know this is not a relationship talk, but this could help someone, especially going with mental health. If you don't know your partner's love language, that could be an issue. In relation to if it's quality time and you're giving them gifts and going, here, babe, I love you so much. All they want to do is spend time with you. They don't care about money. So yeah. if you're giving them gifts and not actually spending quality time with them, of course, there's going to be nigglies in the fight. So for me, I've been through that. That's why I'm sharing this with you, brother. Um, I know my love language now. I know Steph's. So um, just really figuring out like Instagram can wait. Your business can wait. Your wife will not be around um, forever. Instagram will. Social media will. So yeah. Yeah. Um, that I, loved, I loved how you brought that up because Steph supported me and empowered me in my mental health journey. She's seen me at my worst. So she deserves me at my best. Yeah. She really does. So just want to mention that. I definitely agree. I'm, I'm, I'm the same way. She's, my fiance has seen me at my worst. So. And he would encourage me to do certain things behind the scenes. Mm. Definitely have a, a agreement that we on dates. We put our phones down. You know, to take the pictures and go like this for a second or whatever. <laughs> or get in the story, then put your phone down because it's nothing like being present in a moment. Mm. Like looking at the person and having a conversation. Not it ain't just your, your girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever, but whoever you're with, your family member, like your kids, be present in that moment. Talk to the people because this is so can be so distracting, you know. So I definitely agree to that, man. Just lose you on that, man. It's out of respect as well. So if you're struggling yeah. with addiction in relation to validation, so dopamine hit. So when people wake up in the morning, I, I guarantee uh, this is by facts as well with the ABS Australian Bureau of Statistics about people with addiction and mental health. And I think it's called the social media dilemma. If you haven't watched it on Netflix, definitely watch it. It's oh, in relation. Part. Yeah, it's so okay. good. Just a, so powerful in relation to how social media is actually controlling your mental health and causing people to have body image, anxiety. Um, it can ruin relationships. And I've seen it firsthand with clients and friends. I agree. That's why I'm, I'm very careful with my eyes on if it's something that I don't need to look at or don't need to follow, I'm not doing that. Or make me feel some type of way, make me feel angry. Nah, I'm not doing that. This was great, a great, great conversation. This is episode one. So um, great way to start the season. Before we go, uh, when, when you get up in the morning, what, what motivates you? Mm, and I just want to acknowledge this has been an incredible conversation yes. as well. Like you're getting up in the morning early and your dedication. So your motivation is helping people. So you're helping me as well. So I just want to say great for you, brother. It's been Appreciate an that. incredible way in Sunday. So motivation is an interesting word for me. I'm, I'm finding I'm just not motivated enough to start the day or start that job or just start that diet. So it comes down to consistency and integrity. So for me, I do the five second rule. So I feel like I'm in a spaceship. If I'm in bed, five, four, three, two, one, I get up on two. Uh, Mel Robbins, it's an incredible book, The, uh, the Five Second Rule. Um, it will change your life about um, motivation. I'll send that to you, Craig, so you can share it with you. Um, I was listening the other day, matter of fact. Oh, beautiful. I was. And that's where I got the whole, the thing of um, uh, writing things down before you go to bed. I got that from her. It's on YouTube. And that person. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. I find what motivates me is I don't want to be stuck in the same position in a year's time that really scares the shit out of me of going to the same job I don't like, going to looking at my bank account, going, I deserve better. I know better. 
and seeing my wife work five days a week and I barely see her, that motivates me. I'm like, I need to change. And then when I see people struggling on Instagram, no community, struggling with anxiety and mental health, it's like, Brody, you've got the workshops, you've got the community. So that really inspires me. I don't want to say motivates me. It inspires me to the, like, goosebumps, like, in my heart, just, mm -mm, mm -mm, like, straight up, like, not anxious, just feeling like I need to get out of my own way because um, there's, I think, uh, what's his name? Uh, oh, you probably heard of him, but his name's not coming to me, but the, the analogy of the graveyard, remember, like, your dreams die with you. You're the only person to get you out. Either Eric Thomas or that's yes. Lee Brown, one of them. It's one of them. Yeah, right? yeah. It's one of them. Yeah. And, they talk and that, insp that inspires me to go, wow, like if I die tomorrow, the retreats, the specialized mental health workshops, empowerment, the collaborations I want to connect with, they're dead. No one else will bring them. Only you had to bring them. And now everybody else has to suffer. And that's like, oh, like that's good motivation to right. wake me up. So I just want a better life for. My, my wife, myself, my family, and just like you, we've had many conversations on Instagram uh, DMs and also like when I interviewed you in my uh, IGTV series, it's like I just want to give back. So when people say, oh, for an example, I know you'll get wealthy. I know you'll be incredible things. And you, you, like wealth is like, wealth's like interesting for me. Like money is just a number. Money is energy. So for an example, when people say I'm going to be a millionaire, a billionaire, why? And the reason yeah. why people don't get there is they don't have a why. So for me, I want to create millions, billions, trillions. So I can actually start building things to the masses. So I can help people. I can build houses, build schools. Like, yes, I'm going to buy a nice house and a car and enjoy that process. But that doesn't drive me. That doesn't wake me up going, oh, I can't wait to earn this money so I can buy a car and it's to the point like when you wealth doesn't have to be bad. And I think the reason why I say this, so many people look at people with money and think they're bad people. Um, if you're a bad person without money, um, you'll probably be a bad person with money. If you're a good person with money, you'll probably still be a good person when you get money. So money doesn't change people. It's really um, what's your intention with it. Good point. Good point. This was a great, great interview this is season one so this is a uh you set the bar like destroyed it <laughs> <laughs> i must say thank you i um appreciate your friendship you continue to doing what you're doing you are definitely the way you definitely motivate people you motivate me so i definitely appreciate your friendship uh, before you leave tell the audience where to find you on social media or anything like that or what you have going on currently 